Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about how I landed my job at Microsoft. So I went through that entire process from the initial phone screen to the first round interview all the way to that dreaded final round interview. And I wanted to talk more about how I prepared beforehand as well as how I went through that interview process. I know there's a lot of question marks when it comes to interviewing at these big tech companies and I wanted to make it a little bit more clear for people who are just starting out. So just a disclaimer, I don't think working at a big tech company or FANG is the end all be all of software engineering roles. I think that if you're really passionate about a specific product or a company, that's awesome. Obviously, it'll look really good on your resume. There are perks to working at these big tech companies. I think it'll show that you're determined to get in, you pursue challenges, and that you're also willing to work in a very challenging environment. So it does kind of have that brand name when you put it on your resume. But other than that, I don't think that people need to pursue it if they feel that it's not a good fit for them. There's tons of companies out there and I worked for a couple of other companies before Microsoft and I really loved working there. It was very challenging. I love the product. The team dynamics were great. Pretty much anywhere you go right now, software engineering is really in and it's in high demand. So a lot of companies will be catering to your needs as a software engineer. That being said, you're obviously here to learn more about how I landed my job, so you can probably land your job at Microsoft or some other big tech company as well. So stay tuned and I will get into the details of the steps that I took to get into Microsoft. But before I get into that, it will be really helpful if you like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I also really enjoy reading your guys' comments, so feel free to leave a comment below on if you like this video or if you wanna see something else in the future. I'm really open to suggestions right now and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so let's get into it. So number one is passion. If you're not passionate about the company that you're interviewing for, then there's really no point in pursuing it. And I say that because a lot of people go into this process with the wrong intentions. So it's pretty easy to get caught up in the fact that these big tech companies pay a lot of money. You end up getting a lot of benefits such as RSUs as well as huge sign-on bonuses. And that can get very daunting when you see a lot of other people around you maybe pursuing those goals for those reasons and also ending up succeeding in them. But I'm telling you, it is not worth it if you're not passionate about the technology, about the type of people that work there, and the type of challenges that they're pursuing. If you end up going in it for the money, it'll show in your interview. I had quite a few interviews where I was not passionate about that specific role and it did show. I didn't have the same enthusiasm when I was interviewing and when I was collaborating, it didn't seem very genuine. So with Microsoft, I actually really wanted to work there specifically because of the technical challenges. They're dealing with such a massive amount of data as well as so many customers around the world that they need to really understand how to scale their systems and how to use distributed systems to their advantage. So to me, that was a really cool problem to be a part of and ha help to solve. The other thing is I really wanted to work with people that liked being challenged. And obviously if you are taking the time to learn and go through this interview process, you can assume that the people that are working at these companies probably like to learn and probably like to be challenged. Now, that's not to say that the people that are working at these companies are smarter than everyone else. I really don't agree with that either. I don't think you have to be a genius, and I've said this before, I think you just need to have a lot of preparation, focus, and then also you need that passion because it really helps drive and motivate you when you do wanna reach that goal that you're looking to meet. The second way that I landed this job was through technical preparation. Now this one's a little bit more obvious. So Microsoft is a tech oriented company, right? So you're gonna have to really have those technical skills to meet the bar that they're looking for when you're going through those interviews. So they typically test you on data structures and algorithms. And that's not really a secret for a lot of these big tech and FANG companies. They're looking for you to really have an in-depth knowledge of data structures, algorithms, something that if you went to college for computer science or software engineering for, you probably learned back then. Obviously, if it's been 10 years into your career, or even five years into your career, you've probably forgotten a lot of the intricacies of that. So they expect that you're gonna put in a lot of time outside of your day-to-day -day job to learn these data structures and algorithms or relearn them. 
The way that I prepared was through using Leak Code and Algo Expert. So Leak Code is really helpful because they have a variety of questions. And a lot of these questions are written by people who have gone through interviews, people who work at these companies, and they're pretty accurate in terms of the solution, as well as the discussions that happen behind the scenes. So what I would su suggest and what I ended up doing was to pick the specific data structures and algorithms that I have weaknesses on, and then I would prioritize doing the easy questions first, and then moving on to the medium questions once I had solidified understanding the patterns behind those easy questions, and then and only then would I move on to the hard questions. In the beginning, it's better to have a breadth of knowledge. If you're going through those initial interviews, and specifically for Microsoft, they're probably gonna ask you an easy to medium question in those initial rounds. So having more types of questions under your belt at that point is going to increase your chances. Now, once you get to those final rounds, they're probably going to ask you more difficult questions. So at that point, you also want to have an in-depth knowledge of two to three part questions that they might ask you. I actually started my light preparation six months in advance. I had first interviewed with Amazon and that's kind of what got me kickstarted in continuing to go through those leak code questions as well as Algo Expert. And now the good thing about Algo Expert is with leak code, there's just so many options, sometimes that it's overwhelming. But with Algo Expert, there's only 160 questions, I believe and they're really well organized by category and difficulty. It's a little bit more expensive, but for me, it was a lot more helpful because I'm a visual learner and they had tutorials on how to go step-by-step step and solve that problem. So again, for me, Algo Expert was a lot more helpful than Leak Code, but Leak Code gives you more variety if you're looking to just go and crank out all of those questions. If you haven't seen my 10 interviews with Fang and Big Tech, companies video. I actually went through 10 interviews with all of those companies and that was also part of my preparation as well as practicing with a friend. If you have a friend that's interested in also pursuing these companies, it's really helpful to bounce ideas back and forth and do mock interviews with your friends. The third thing that I did was actually sprucing up my LinkedIn. So I know a lot of people spend time creating their CVs or their resumes and that's really helpful. In my mind though, LinkedIn is kind of taking over. Resumes are a little bit a thing in, in the past. I know it's still formality to send your resume when you're applying for a job, but what helped was I actually got recruited through LinkedIn. So I didn't apply online. The chances of you getting a job at a big tech or fang company significantly increase if you're able to skip that online application process. And the reason I say that is because there are hundreds of thousands of applicants that apply online. And so if you're going through that process, what are the chances that your resume will be picked out of that entire group of people? It's probably very unlikely. It's a lot easier to just cut to the chase and get to that phone screen as fast as you possibly can. And the best way to do that is through networking and connecting with recruiters. Now, Sometimes you get lucky. So for me, I had three years of experience in the industry at that time as well. The market was really hot for software engineers. So recruiters were pretty much reaching out to most people that had a software engineering role and had two to three years of experience under their belt. I actually got reached out to 10 times by recruiters, more than that, but I just didn't have the bandwidth to actually interview more than 10 times because I was also working my nine to five job as well as going to school. So it was really helpful because I got to skip that online application process, have that initial phone screen, and then just get started with the interviews. If you're not in that position where you have many years of experience or you've gone to school and you have that on your LinkedIn, I would say reach out to recruiters on LinkedIn. First of all, set up your profile, make it organized, make it look professional. I'll actually link my LinkedIn in the description below so you can go ahead and look and connect if you want to and be okay with failure. If you reach out to one recruiter, the chances of them getting back to you are pretty slim. So reach out to 10, 20, 30 different recruiters and specifically look out for recruiters that are recruiting for your role. Sometimes people will 
will reach out to recruiters on LinkedIn that are part of a company, but they're not actually recruiting software engineers. They might be recruiting HR spe specialists or they're recruiting people for their legal team. So just make sure that you're doing your research ahead of time and actually reaching out to the right people because that may make the difference between you having to go through that online application process or you significantly increasing your chances by actually just getting started with that phone screen right away. So the fourth thing that I did to land Microsoft is really focus on the behavioral interviews as well as the system design interviews. Because I had three years of experience, they were looking for someone that actually understood system design a little bit behind the scenes. So you have to understand how the servers connect with the client as well as what kind of database you might be using, what a proxy is. And that's not always important to know right off the bat if you're just graduating from college then they'll probably focus on something like data structures and algorithms. And again, that all has to do with luck, how much experience you have, um, how much experience you claim to have during the interview process. But for the behavioral interviews, everyone will be asked behavioral interviews. And I think this is so vital and people really overlook this just because people tend to focus more so on the technical aspect. Microsoft is a very technical oriented company. It's a big tech company. So obviously we're going to assume that they really wanna make sure that your technical skills are up to par. But the problem is they're also very customer focused. They make a lot of products for customers. So we wanna also make sure that our communication skills are up to par. Being a software engineer doesn't just mean sitting at your desk and coding all day. It means gathering business requirements. It means communicating and asking clarifying questions if the issue is too ambiguous to you. You want to be able to talk to the business and understand what your customer wants before you can solve the problem. If you don't know what the problem is, there's no point in being technically competent because you need to understand what problem you're solving in the first place. So I would say really focus on those behavioral interviews. I know it's a little bit more difficult to find resources out there. There's stuff that you can Google in terms of what questions are typically asked. I know the classic questions that are asked are how do you resolve conflict? Tell me about a time where you did this and someone disagreed with you. Tell me about a time where you had to convince your manager of something or tell me about a time that your idea didn't get pushed forward. What did you do? What was your reaction? If you're more so a senior or lead engineer, they may ask you questions about leadership. So they may ask you how you break apart a new project, how you assign tasks to people, how you move a project along, what to do if the deadline is so tight that you might not make it. I would say really focus on A, having examples, B, being able to communicate and think on your feet. You may get follow-up questions. In fact, you will definitely get follow-up questions. So make sure that you know how to think on your feet and also just be genuine. It's okay to be honest. It's okay to say that you've failed in the past, that you've made mistakes. I would appreciate it if an employee was more upfront with me versus giving me a rehearsed answer. So I know some classic answers to what are your weaknesses could be, oh, I'm too detail oriented or I'm too organized, which they aren't really weaknesses. They're just humble brags. So if you are someone who looks into things too in depth to the point where you may not be making progress, us, like I have in the past, I owned up to that. And I think my employer really appreciated that. So make sure you have those behavioral aspects down and I can link some resources below as well. It's really helpful to be able to communicate your thoughts because if you have really interesting ideas, it doesn't matter if you can't actually convince people of those ideas. The fifth thing is luck and honesty. I say luck because you can really increase your chances of getting a job at Microsoft if you follow these steps, but it's still never guaranteed. This is what worked for me, but it may not work for someone else. You should take everyone's advice with a grain of salt because everyone has different experiences, different personalities. You also will get vastly different questions in your interview process. You may get a recruiter that really, really sticks up for you, or you may get a recruiter that's just having a bad day. So luck does play a role, but you can really increase your chances and decrease the significance that luck has if you do prepare and really think through all the steps that you're taking in order to get that job. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really wanted to give you some insight on how I landed my job at Microsoft and hopefully you can too with these steps. 
I know it can be kind of a difficult process sometimes, but just know that failure is a part of this process and failure is a test towards resilience. So anyone can do it. You don't have to be a genius. All you need is preparation, the right skills and the right attitude. Thanks again for watching. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps motivate me to make more videos because I love talking about this stuff and sharing my ideas. And I also love hearing from other people on what they think of this interview process. So what do you think? Is this the best way to land a job at Microsoft or any big tech or fan company? What are your thoughts and what are your steps that you took when you landed your first job? Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.